Um, I've, uh, we've asked two people to um, share their uh, views today um, about uh, what they heard. Um, Rosalind Metz, uh, who is the um, Associate Dean uh, for Library Technology and Digital Strategies at Emory, and um, Francina Turner, who uh, some of you um, may remember, um, a clear fellow uh, and um, a postdoc at the um, Maryland Institute of Technology and the Humanities at MIFF, uh, which has been a frequent contributor to um, uh, CNI programs. And I think for one of any better scheme, we'll just go in simple alphabetical order and uh, invite uh, Rosalind to share her thoughts first. Please understand that I, we haven't asked these folks to do the impossible and give you a real-time summary of the entire meeting in five minutes. We've asked them to just call out a, one or two things, themes, uh, connections that they found to be interesting or helpful. So over to you, Rosalind. Thank you, Cliff. Um, so listening to Heidi this morning or this late afternoon, I guess, um, I was struck by how in the US the lack of government coordination around higher education has made it difficult for academic institutions to really advance the state of higher education. In some ways, Joan Caloric's presentation emphasized this simply because it was about innovation that was needed in order to comply with funding agencies and government regulations in Europe. I have to wonder if higher education in the US was able to identify a single coordinating body similar to JISC, would we be able to pull together enough funding to solve some of the major issues that plague libraries technology and higher education in the US and subsequently the world. Moving into Ken's talk, I saw the truly negative and scary implications of this lack of regulation and coordination within the US in its within the US in its absence companies are filling the void and acting in their own self interest. And unfortunately, because of the nature of our economy, this doesn't just impact the US. Ultimately, I have come to believe the reason there is a lack of regulation and coordination for technology and society is because leaders, both government, education, et cetera, fill in the blank, are not technologists and don't always understand what needs to be regulated. On the flip side, many in the UK have indicated they are jealous of the US system. And as Sarah Shreve said to me during a back channel conversation today, its ability to let a thousand flowers bloom. You can see these flowers blooming in the remaining talks that we saw, um, Joseph Glass, Daniel Pitti, Elizabeth McCauley, Christopher Gilman, Danny Cook, Regina Gong, Lisa Martin, and Allegra Swift gave. And these projects really are magnificent. However, the question I think we need to ask ourselves is where should we be focusing our time and energy? Should it be on letting a thousand technology flowers bloom or should we be trying to tackle the bigger technology issues facing society by ensuring our leaders have a better understanding of technology and its impact? I'm sort of sad that we won't get to hear the next speaker um, because I was curious how that might um, flow into the thoughts that I sort of pulled together as I was listening to everyone. Thank you um, so much for those reflections. And I'm sorry you had to go on before our final speaker too, but uh, sometimes stuff happens. Um, I cannot resist saying that, you know, at some of these JISC CNI meetings that we do periodically, you hear from the Americans, oh, if we only could do the kinds of things that JISC does for the UK institutions. Um, and then you also hear from the, um, the UK participants, gosh, if only we had the flexibility that those Americans did for individual initiative to take hold. So um, yeah. I uh, said that, to Sarah, a, yeah. Sarah um, the grass is always greener on exactly. the other Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for those reflections. And Francina, let me turn to you. 
So I was really interested to hear Kenneth's presentation because I think I wanted answers, right? As a newly minted PhD who's new to all of this, I wanted, because in a person who's, um, you know, a huge user of all things internet, right? Um, but it did drive home that there are going to continue to be more questions than answers when it comes to issues of privacy. Um, I was really interested in the snack cooperative, the presentation Daniel and Joseph gave just as an oral historian and how um, access to records digitally, not just during the pandemic, but also prior to the pandemic really helped me in my research. And so I'm really impressed with the network, the networking feature of it, of seeing the connections. In fact, there's someone I'm researching who I didn't think she'd be there, but I knew her adopted uncle would be, and he was. So it was really interested to see um, those connections. And then that there was also careful attention played, paid to um, description and just different ethical implications. Um, I think it was important for me to, to hear that um, kind of sussed out. And of course, as um, I teach an online African-American history course. So the, the talk from Christopher and Elizabeth about using digital archives in Canvas was really important to me. Um, and I know they talked about using um, digital and physical con collections together, but I was really thinking about it in terms of um, maybe having students who, who will not be able to access the physical um, collection. So that was, this is all really interesting work for me to see happening. And then the open educational resource presentation that Lisa, Danny, Allegra, and Regina gave was important because as a um, first generation college student, and I, I struggle to find resources for my students that don't cost them anything, but I'm in a department um, the, at the institution I adjunct for that insists on a particular textbook. Um, and I, every, every semester I've taught it, I have students who tell me it's two, three weeks before they can get the book and they've missed so much of the class. So it's, it's been to me, for me today, really enjoyable to see things that I'm, I'm concerned about, but not quite sure how to deal with actually be worked on and sussed out um, in this way. So this has been a really enjoyable afternoon for me. Thank you so much for those reflections, both of you. Uh, those are wonderful. And now